Gothic architecture. Ah, yes, the dark and dramatic architectural style everyone's talking about. I believe that even if you are not that into dark aesthetics, chances are you have seen a lot of Gothic buildings and churches and films and cartoons already. Also, many well-known cathedrals were built in this style, for example, Notre Dame Cathedral, Chartres Cathedral, Westminster Abbey, and Milan Cathedral. So I'll get to the point. Here's what we'll discuss in this video. We'll get to know more about Gothic architecture history, key characteristics, and also how the style may differ from one country to another. What exactly is Gothic architecture? Gothic architecture is a part of Gothic art, which also includes paintings and sculpture from the mid 12th century to 16th century. It was started from France and then spread throughout Europe. The architectural style in the 12th century slowly shifted from the solid and round structure of Romanesque architecture to more focus on height, light, and ornament. Some prominent changes from Romanesque to Gothic are the change from rounded arches to pointed arches, thicker walls to thinner walls, and small window to large windows. They also add other key elements to Gothic buildings like flying buttresses, pointed arches, ribbed walls, rose window, and stained glass windows. But why is it called Gothic architecture? If you have been watching my videos, you may already have heard of this very often. People during the medieval period didn't call this style Gothic. The term was coined later in the 16th century, the Renaissance period, by Giorgio Vasari, an Italian painter and architect. So the thing is that the Renaissance held classical Greek and Roman architecture and also the culture in high esteem. So by calling this style Gothic, referencing to the Germanic tribes, who was basically the primary cause of Rome's downfall, it kind of carried a negative connotation. Basically, Vasari viewed this medieval style as barbaric, like those Germanic tribes. So if Gothic was not a term used in the Middle Ages, then how did people call this style? Well, they don't exactly have an official name. It was sometimes called Opus Francigenum, which means Frankish work in Latin, or sometimes called Opus Modernum, or modern work, and Novum Opus, meaning new work. <laughs> So here is a list of key elements that make Gothic architecture Gothic. Number one, vertical emphasis. Gothic architecture emphasizes height to soar closer to heaven. So apart from tall and thin walls, they also use spires and pinnacles to increase height. Other architectural advancements like flying buttresses, pointed arches, and rib walls were implemented to support the higher structure. Number two, pointed arches. Pointed arches, an iconic feature adapted from Islamic architecture, are both aesthetically beautiful and very practical. So while the rounded arches from the Romanesque are not bad, but pointed arches are better suited for a tall structure because the pointed arches help directly exert the weight outward to the pillar and then to the ground. Number 3. Flying buttresses Flying buttresses are very important as they have arches that support the building exterior and transfer the weight of the roof and upper walls outward to the ground, preventing the walls from collapsing. Number 4. Rib walls. The buildings in the Romanesque era, they do have walls, but it was spiral walls and groin vaults. So how is this rib vault different? from the previous era. So rib vaults have intersecting ribs that create a grid-like structure as you can see here in the photo. So this grid-like structure can support the weight of the ceiling and distribute it evenly to the columns below. Number 5. Gargoyles Gargoyles are not exactly monsters. There was a legend in 7th century France since Romanus defeated a fire-breathing dragon, Gargoyle, and after trying to burn the creature, the dragon's head refused to be burnt, so the saint mounted the head of the dragon on a church wall to ward off evil spirits and protect the town. Well, even though after I've read this story, I still don't understand the logic, I still don't understand the reason, but that's practically the myth of why they put mythical creatures on ceiling. And from the etymology side, the word gargoyle derives from the French word 
for throat gorge. It makes sense because gargoyles are not only decoratives but also sculptures with hollow necks directing rainwater away from the building through their mouth. And by keeping water away from the wall, gargoyles help prevent the construction from erosion and other water damage. The gargoyle, that most people in modern era imagine might be a demonic humanoid creature with bat wings, well, in fact, people in the medieval period built gargoyles in so many forms, including a batwing creature, chimera, or even ones with human heads. Number 6. Stained glass windows After we have gone through how gothic architecture maintains its height and also its structure, let's see how they bring more light into their buildings. So when talking about stained glasses, many people may think of Gothic architecture first, but the stained glasses have existed since the ancient Egypt and Roman times, and the stained glass windows were very flourish and very well developed in Persia or modern day Iran. And then it was after that that the stained glass was used in Romanesque churches in Europe. Churches in the Gothic era then utilized stained glass windows for light and depicted biblical scenes for the visitors. Number 7. Rose Windows A rose window is a big circle window similar to the oculus on Romanex walls, but the rose windows has ornate tracery and sometimes silver or colourful stained glasses. It is typically built on the west facade of a cathedral along with two towers. Number 8. Lastly, Ornamentation So, what should I say? The ornaments are everywhere. Tracery, gables, Spires, boxes, flying buttresses, portals, columns, ceilings, well, everything. And in some periods, the ornament was even carved on the walls. So let's start with the first Gothic building, the Basilica of Saint-Denis in France. So even though the cathedral was regarded as the first Gothic architecture, it was actually built in the late Roman times before it was rebuilt in Gothic style during 1134 to 1144 under the supervision of Abbas Suger, the secretary to the abbot of Saint-Denis. This architecture was so significant because it was a destination for Christian pilgrims since the year 250 and it is also the burial place for many prominent French monarchs including Clovis I, the first king of the Franks, Louis XVI, and even Marie Antoinette. Since the building was constructed to honour God, Suger came up with the concept to have the construction rise high into the sky, or into the heaven, and have more light in its interior since light is related to the divine. And that's why he rebuilt portions of the Abbey church, with the emphasis on vertical features like spires and pointed arches and included bigger and more windows. Following the rebuilding of the Abbey of Saint-Denis, numerous cathedrals in France were constructed in this style, including Notre-Dame de Paris in 1163 and Chateau Cathedral in 1194. Pre-Gothic Influences Three main influences are Islamic, Romanesque, and Armenian architecture. Let's start with Islamic influence, the most prominent one. There are several ways Islamic culture could be introduced to France. One comes from the Crusaders, who introduced architectural ideas from Middle East to Europe. Another way could be from Islamic architecture during Muslim Empire's rule in Spain. To be more specific, Moorish architecture from Al-Andalus may have impacted the origins of the Gothic style. For instance, al Haferia Palace, built in the 10th century had pointed arches resembling those later seen in Gothic buildings. Likewise, the earliest rib vaults were seen not in the Gothic cathedral but at the mosque cathedral of Cordoba in Al-Andalus. Apart from Islamic, the Gothic rose windows drew inspiration from the previous Romanesque circular windows called oculus or oculi as seen in some Romanesque cathedrals. Apart from Romanesque and Islamic, some historians also cited Armenian architecture as one of the influences of Gothic style. Some historians believe that the oldest Gothic arch is in Ani, the medieval capital of Armenia. Armenian architecture influences may have reached Europe through Byzantine, where their arches were reinterpreted and emerged in Gothic period later. So as you can see, the Gothic style did not emerge from scratch but evolved from Romanesque Islamic and possibly Armenian. How the style spread from France to England 
Buildings in many Western countries were influenced by Gothic art. However, England has to be one of the most notable countries to discuss. So, how did Gothic art get from France to England? Well, it kind of makes sense that England and France exchanged their art and culture, considering their geography. However, their relationship was also very, let's say, complicated. The main event that brought French art to England was not by peace or something of the sort, but through the Norman conquest of England during 1066 to 1071, resulting in the loss of English control over the Catholic Church. So after the conquest, French architects from Normandy brought Gothic art to England, and the first large-scale Gothic-style decoration was applied to the Canterbury Cathedral built in 1174 and redecorated in Gothic style from 1175 to 1180. So after some rebuilding and decorating existing cathedrals in England, the first English architecture built entirely in a Gothic manner was Wells Cathedral, built from 1175, dedicated in 1239. So following this, the Gothic architectural style became increasingly popular in many European countries, including Germany, Italy, Spain, Sweden, Poland, and many others. The basic categories used by historians are based on their development in France and England. So let's start from the original, France. French Gothic can be divided into four periods, Primary Gothic, Classic Gothic, Rayonnant Gothic, and Flamboyant Gothic. Primary Gothic is basically the starting point of Gothic architecture style. Most of the Gothic architecture in this era still has many elements from the Romanics. They are not very tall because many of them were at on redecorated or rebuilt of Romanex buildings. So examples of buildings that could be considered as primary Gothic are the Basilica of Saint-Denis, the first Gothic cathedral itself, and Saint-Mère-Église in France. Classic Gothic, sometimes called High Gothic, started around the 13th century. They had taller structure and better buttresses to support the height. The distinguishing characteristic of this era is the use of the thin bar tracery instead of plate tracery. Some examples from this period are Amiens Cathedral and Reims Cathedral. Next, the third one, Rayonnant Gothic or Radiant Gothic, started around the mid to late 13th century. So after managing to handle the height in the previous periods, they then focus more on the light part being radiant, thus the name Rayonnant. The key features are the giant rose windows and more usage of stained glasses. Apart from the windows, blind tracery or tracery on walls started to be more common in this era. La Song Chapelle is an excellent example of this period. A main cathedral from the classic period could also be counted as Rayonnant. After managing with the height and also the light, Flamboyant Gothic from the mid-14th century is when they go all out on decorations. Many ornaments from this style have a flame-like appearance, whether on spires, tracery, and porches, hence the name Flamboyant. Apart from France, this style was also popular in Spain. Some examples are Trinity Abbey in France and Segovia Cathedral in Spain. What we have next is the categorization of English Gothic architecture. People from the Gothic Revival era later in the Victorian grouped the medieval English Gothic architecture as three parts, Early English, Decorated English, and Perpendicular Gothic. Early Gothic, known as Lancet Gothic, gained popularity in the late 12th century. They started to incorporate various Gothic elements such as pointed arches, elevated patterns, and flying buttresses. But one key feature of the Early English is their Lancet windows which are the tall, simple, narrow, pointed windows typically grouped into two or three. Examples of early English Gothic are Southville Minster and York Minster. Decorated English was in the late 13th to 14th century, roughly the same time as the Rayonnant Gothic in France. The style has become more elaborated with geometrical and flowing tracery. And what made this period stand out so much is not only the decoration, but also their fan walls. So English fan walls is made up of concave ribs that extend from central point in the shape of a fan. Gloucester Cathedral is the earliest known construction with this type of walls. King's College Chapel is another decorated Gothic building with fan walls. The next step after the decorated English is the Perpendicular Gothic, sometimes referred to as early Perpendicular, started around the late 14th century and continued to the mid-16th century. The Perpendicular still featured many ornaments, especially woodwork. 
The fan vaults were still common, however, unlike the French flamboyant Gothic, perpendicular is less elaborated. The defining traits in this era are their vertical structures, vertical lines, and horizontal lines. That's why windows in this era have grid-like galleries with strong vertical lines. Another standout characteristic of this period are the use of tall towers with flying buttresses instead of spires, and the use of wide four-pointed arch doorways, or what they later called two-door arch. The earliest construction in perpendicular is the chapter house of All Saint Paul's Cathedral. The choir of Gloucester Cathedral, built later in the 14th century after the completion of the cathedral itself, is also a great example of perpendicular cage-like windows. So from the examples listed in each era, you may have noticed that it is not uncommon for some architecture or some buildings to fall into more than one categorization. For example, the Gloucester Cathedral I've mentioned was built in decorated English, but its choir was later built in the perpendicular style. In a more general sense, Gothic architecture can be divided into two main stages, Early Gothic and High Gothic. The High Gothic counts from the Classic Gothic onwards for France and the Decorated English onwards for England. So just by comparing the development in France and England, we can already see so many regional differences even though they are both called Gothic. So that leads to the next topic. What are other regional differences? of Gothic architecture in other European countries. Aside from France and England, other countries also have their own unique way to design Gothic buildings, and here are some examples. First, German Gothic buildings were known for their large towers and large spires. Since their buildings were so massive, many of them could not be completed according to their original plans. This includes Cologne Cathedral built in 1248 and then suspended in 1560. Wolminster was built in 1377 and then it was halted in 1543 before being continued later in the 19th century. Another distinctive German style is the Brick Gothic. This unique red brick architecture was also well known in other countries around the Baltic Sea like Poland and Sweden as well as in Flanders or modern day Belgium. Some examples of brick Gothic architecture are St. Nicholas Church in Germany, St. Mary's Church in Poland, Uppsala Cathedral in Sweden, Belfry Halls in the centre of Burgess, Italy also had distinct Gothic styles, even if the Gothic influence was not strong enough to completely replace the Romanic architecture in Italy. So apart from stones and bricks like other region, Italians also incorporate marble in their decorations or even in the building itself. For example, they have marble pillars in Siena Cathedral or pilping marble facade at the Doge's Palace. These are only a few examples of how each region applied the Gothic style to its architecture differently. If you would love to hear more about this topic, let me know in the comment section, because to be honest, I do want to talk more about this as well. The shift from Gothic to Renaissance Renaissance architecture began even before the fall of Gothic architecture. It began in the 14th century Italy, slowly pushing Gothic architecture into the background by the mid-15th century until the Gothic officially ended in 16th century. The Renaissance is the revival of classical ancient Greeks and Romans concepts, including the knowledge and architecture. It is usually considered at the end of the medieval or middle ages and the start of the enlightenment era. The main reasons for the rise of renaissance are 1. rediscovery and increased studies of Greek and Roman text. 2. people have more contacts with other cultures allowing them to contemplate more ideas. Lastly, the black death during 1348 to 1350 killed roughly one third of the European population causing shifts in power, this include religion. So as a result, Gothic architecture, which are mainly built for religious purposes, was not as flourish as before, and many new constructions were inspired by the round symmetry and geometric style of classic room instead. (laughs) 
After its decline for 200 years, Gothic architecture became popular again in the mid-18th century England and continued to be widespread in the United States, and this is what we call Gothic Revival or Neo-Gothic. There are several reasons why this medieval style has been revived. The main reasons are 1. The high church's reaction to the rise of nonconformist Protestants. Number two is the concerns about the machinery during the industrialization era, which led to a longing for something more spiritual among the Victorians. So Gothic Revival buildings still maintain height, pointed arches, pinnacles, and ornate decorations from the medieval times, but you may also wonder if there's any differences between medieval Gothic and Gothic Revival. And yes, the major differences between medieval Gothic and neo-Gothic are the use of materials and their technology and the purposes of why they built the building. Firstly, while medieval Gothic cathedrals were mainly made of stones and glass, the neo-Gothic incorporated steel and iron due to the advancements in the Industrial Revolution era. Second, some of the functional features are not needed anymore because technology they have better ways to manage how to distribute weight. For example, Gothic Revival architects frequently omitted flying buttresses from the designs, even though some buildings might still include them for aesthetic reasons. Likewise, gargoyles became less common since downpiping was more preferred. Lastly, while the Gothic style was reserved mostly for religious buildings during the medieval, it was a lot more common to see universities, government buildings, and even private residents with Gothic-inspired structures and decoration in this Gothic Revival era. I think Gothic architecture resents many things, like the advancements of technology in the medieval era, or the era that people think that they don't have any advancement, the dedication of medieval people to the church and religion, and the relationships or influences each culture had one another, especially how they take a lot of inspiration from Islamic architecture. So after you listen to this point, I would like to hear more about what your favourite thing about Gothic architecture is. So for me, the perpendicular Gothic style always has a special place in my heart, but well, what about you? So at first, I want to include more neo-Gothic architecture info in this video, but after I've listed all the things I wanted to talk about, I was like, nope, that's not possible to do in one video. So I'll make another video for the neo-Gothic instead. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a nice day. See you on the next journey.